Anybody ever make the statement to God that said, if you had been here, certain things would not have happened? Lord, if you had responded when I prayed, when I called on you, certain things would not have transpired. Anybody ever pray? Just wave at me if you've ever been in that situation before. We've got a few honest folks in the building. There are times that we can reach that place in life, and it feels like where we are, Jesus is not there. It's like darkness. That's all that we can see. That's all that we can feel. We can't sense the light. We don't know where to go. We don't know how things have trans are going to transpire, how things will take place. It seems like things are only getting worse and worse. Some people right now might be making that statement. Lord, if you were here, these things would not be happening in my life. If you were here, things would not be in, uh, taking place in this world the way that they are. We would not be facing this pandemic. Lord, if you were really on this earth, we would not be facing this turmoil that we're facing. But people that at times make that statement really don't see clearly and don't understand what God is doing. Right. Don't understand his purpose, don't understand his plan, don't know his purpose and plan. And there are times where we don't know what God is working on and we don't understand what God is up to. We don't see his hand at work every time. But those are the times when God does some of his finest work when we can't see what he's doing. Can you cut me back up here a bit? I feel like I'm ringing. In John chapter 11, word came to Jesus that Lazarus was sick. And how many times you send in a, a, a prayer request to the church? You might come on a Sunday morning, I need prayer for something, and you let somebody know, and you expect to get a response. You expect for somebody to possibly come and pray, but you're not waiting for this delay of, well, we'll see about it. Jesus waited four days before he went to go see Lazarus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that was his friend. He said, oh, there, there must be a rift between Lazarus and Jesus because that's his friend. And you would think for a friend, you would jump and go respond. But Jesus did not move. Don't discount yourself a friend of God because you prayed and nothing happened. Well, God must not love me anymore. And here's what happens when we pray and God doesn't do a work and God doesn't do something. We stop and say, oh, I must have sinned. I must have done something wrong. God must be pushing me away. I beg to differ because in the garden when Adam and Eve sinned, God didn't push them away. God was moving towards them knowing their state. And he waited, and he showed up there, and Lazarus died. And Martha comes to meet Jesus, and she says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Can I tell you this? There are situations where God is going to allow, if I could say this, maybe not a physical death, but some, to some type of death to happen. He's going to allow things to transpire. And you know where he is? He's standing right next to you. If Jesus had been there, Jesus just might have let him die. Mary, come in and he, he, uh, Mary goes to the tomb and Jesus goes and meets her. And she says, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. You go and you read through the Bible and when Jesus walked on the earth, you find many situations, circumstances where people were going through things and they came to Jesus or people brought people, sick people to Jesus. They talk about the man who, who, who had um, palsy and they brought him on a bed to Jesus, took him up to the roof because they couldn't get into the house and tore up the ceiling and lowered him down to Jesus. They brought people to Jesus. People found a way to get to Jesus. The, the, the uh, woman with the issue of blood pressed through the crowd to get to Jesus as he was on his way to go touch a little girl who was sick. People came to Jesus. A Roman centurion came to Jesus or, or, or sent for, for Jesus 
to speak a word of healing. Why? Because Jesus had power. He could manifest his power, and he did throughout all that time, throughout that land. He manifested his strength. There were miracles, signs, and wonders. Deaf people heard. Blind eyes were opened. Sick people were healed. Devils were cast out. People got up and walked. Some of these people were sick a long time, but that didn't stop Jesus. Acts chapter 3, verse 1. It says, now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Prior to this, you go to Acts chapter 1, this is the time after Jesus rose from the dead and he, he talked to his disciples and it said that he, he spent about 40 days with his disciples talking to them and they wanted to know, is this the time that you're going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said, it, 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 all of this is not for you to know. Yeah. Basically, it's none of your business. But you will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You see, what you're looking for in a kingdom is not going to be manifested in the way that you think it would be. I'm going to give you power to manifest and to establish my kingdom, my dominion, in a way that you never would have thought possibly possible. He said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Some people are trying to walk in power of God, of God without the Holy Ghost. You can't walk in God's power without his spirit. And just because you spoke in tongues and received it one day, that does not mean that from that point in time forward, you can walk in your own strength. Every day I need God's power. Every day I need God's mercy. Every day I need his grace. I need his covering every single day. Every moment. I don't reach a point in time where I can get up and go without him. I don't reach a day where I can live without him. I never and never will have the strength. But with him... I can do whatever he has called me to do. We will always struggle trying to walk without God. We will always struggle. And if you feel like your life is blessed without God, oh, I pray that you go find a place to pray and ask God to open up your eyes. Because you need him. I need him. He said, you shall receive power and you will be witnesses unto me throughout Samaria, Judea, Jerusalem, to the uttermost parts of the earth. After that, they all gathered together in an upper room. And when they gathered together, I like what it said, they, they, they prayed. They prayed. Hey, we need somebody to preach a sermon. We need somebody to lead a song. We need somebody to do this. And that. No, they got together and they prayed. What do we need in this day? We need prayer. We need to pray in this time. We need prayer in this season. If you're, if you're looking for a position, I tell you a position, it's a place on your knees in prayer. It's a posture of surrender. They prayed. The Holy Ghost fell upon them. They were filled. Many Jews throughout the area heard what was taking place, what was transpiring. They, they questioned them about it, and Peter preached. And I've read a few places in Acts, and I like it. He, and, and they were bold preachers. Peter was bold. You know what he told them? He said, and, that, that, and Jesus, whom you crucified... <laughs> He didn't sugarcoat it. He said, you crucified. And I, I know we don't like to have a finger pointed at what I did, but let's be honest. It's what you did. I crucified him with my sin. But you know what? He didn't stop there, though. He didn't say, you crucified him. You guys turned him in. You hung him on the cross. You killed him. And that's it. But he told him. 
there's more for you. There's more for you. There's hope for you. There's a promise that's yours if you'll receive it. And he said, men and brethren, what do we need to do? Peter said, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, the name that's above every other name, that very one that you crucified is the very one that's going to forgive your sins. That one that you crucified is the one that's going to wash you. That one that you crucified is going to make you righteous. He said, the promise is unto you and to your children and to all who are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. They went from there, fellowshipping, breaking bread, following the apostles, listening, connected, unified. And then in chapter 3, it says, Peter and John went up to the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And there was a man, it said, lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. All his life, the only thing that he knew was that he could not walk. From his mother's womb, he could not walk. He lived with this condition all his life. I'm talking to some people this morning in the sanctuary, in the multi-purpose room, in the large fellowship hall, and if you're in your kitchen, in your living room, bedroom, in the car, wherever you are, talking to some people that are going through some things that you've been living with for a long time. Some of you have been lame and paralyzed spiritually for a long time. Some of you say it's the way that I was brought up and things that happened to me and things that transpired. I'm not discounting any of that. But I've come to preach this morning. Rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. You see, in this account here, they laid him at the gate. But what I talked about before, they brought people to Jesus. They tore up the roof and brought him to Jesus. People pressed through crowds to get to Jesus, cried out to Jesus for healing. And they laid this man at the gate of the temple. What happened? What transpired? Well, Jesus isn't here. Oh, he's not? Physically, no, he's not here, but he's still here. The power is still here. The manifestation of might and miracles is still here. But somebody missed the, mirror, the, 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 missed the memo. He told his disciples, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with, with, with new tongues. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. And they laid this man at the gate. This wasn't the first time. Every day. Every day they laid him at the gate. And they went up at the hour of prayer. This wasn't the first day of the prayer meeting. So you're telling me that this man was laid in this spot at the gate and people are walking by him to go pray. And you got a miracle sitting right there. You got a manifestation of God's power sitting right there at the gate. Finally, the day came, and what, I, what was interesting to me is they laid this lame man in front of a gate called Beautiful. What's beautiful about being lame, not being able to walk? Why would you lay something like that, something that can't do for anybody at a gate that's beautiful? And they laid him there, why? To ask for alms. I can't do, and I need something. Give me something. I can't work. I can't get up and do things on my own. So I'm going to come and come to where people are praying and ask for alms so I can get my needs met. Verse 3 says, Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an alms. I don't know if this was the first time that they've been asked. 
Could have been the hundredth time. It could have been the first time. But he saw them about to go into the temple and asked them for alms. I need something. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. Yeah, look at us. It's like somebody being posted up at the steps down there. You're walking into church, and they ask you for some money. You say, look at me. And they look at you. Yeah, you look like you got money. Give me some money. I'm hungry. You're going into the church. And people in the church have money. Don't, don't clam up on to Get all tight on me now. We already received an offering. I'm not about to take another offering. He said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. They look like they have money, I guess. Some of y'all look like, and look, yeah, I can tell which ones of y'all have money. I can tell looking at you. It's those ones that get real tight and quiet. <laughs> they were amen in a moment ago talking about signs, wonders, and miracles. You talk about money. They tighten up on you. Pastor, I think we should get a camera in the back in the other room so we can maybe put that up there on the screen so we can preach to them too and I can see them. But, and he sought to receive something of them. Verse 6, Peter responded and said, silver and gold have I none. You know what this world needs, and I, I, I know this world is in trouble. It's in a mess. What this world needs is not more money. I know people have you know, needs and you know, people have lost houses and, and, and vehicles and, and people are hungry and but people need food and all of that. But you know what? More than anything, they don't need those things. You know, you can get to heaven on an empty stomach. You can get to heaven with no money in the bank. You can get to heaven without a car. You can get to heaven without a house. You know, some people are going to miss out on heaven because of those things. Don't let those things be the, be the weight that ties you to this earth. Don't lay it for yourself treasures on this earth. Now, if you got treasures, that doesn't mean, you know, go out and spend it and, and just have a good time in the earth. But don't get caught up in this life and gaining things in this life. But set your affection on heavenly places. Set your eyes upon Jesus. Set your focus upon him. And he looked at that man, seeing what he needed. He said, silver and gold, I don't have. I know what you're asking for. I know what you're wanting, but I don't have what you want. I don't even have what you're needing right now in a natural sense. But such as I have, I've got something that you need. I've got something that I can give you. And I'm going to give it to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. You're talking to a man laying there on the ground, sitting on the ground, whatever posture he was in. You're speaking to a situation and telling him to do something that is not physically possible. Peter was just taken after Jesus because that's exactly what Jesus did. Jesus looked down at that man with palsy. He said, get up, take up your bed, and go home. Yeah. Hold on, Jesus. Do you, do you understand where he is? He's been in this condition all his life. Peter, do you understand where he is? From his mother's womb, he's been in this condition, and he will always be in that condition. I'm telling you, that is a lie from the devil. I don't care how you were born. I don't care how you were raised. I don't care what you went through. I don't care what you faced. I'm telling you, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. Well, I don't know if I can be healed. I don't know if I can be made whole. What if I go to stand and I fall again? Don't let that stop you from taking a step. Don't let that stop you from believing. I've never walked before. I don't know how to walk. I don't know how to run. That's all right. Rise up and walk. It's time to change your situation. It's time to change what you've been doing. Because the only thing that he knew was somebody would pick him up every day and go take him to a gate. Every day, pick him up, take him there. Pick him up, take him back home. 
Peter looked at that man and said, it's time to change. It's time to walk. It's time to get up. What you've been doing and how you've been living, it's time to change. It's time for you to go and make your own money. And he took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. There are times when gifts of the Spirit is working. There are miracles that take place, and sometimes miracles don't always manifest themselves immediately. There were times when Jesus healed people, and the Bible says that they were in, in that hour, they were made whole. And sometimes we discount what God has done or what we believe that God has done because we don't see anything happening right at that moment. But God may not manifest something for hours, days, weeks, months, or whatever, but he does it in his timing. But you've got to have faith that God can do it immediately. God can do it right now. And if he chooses not to do it right now, but chooses to do it 20 years down the road, so be it. But there are conditions in our spirit that God is not just waiting 20 years down the road to heal. God is looking to work in some situations in our lives right now. Yeah. Immediately. Yeah. Well, the altar's closed. I can't go to the altar. Let me tell you something. If you're facing a situation and you're not in this building and you need the Lord, you're not waiting for Sunday morning at 10 a.m. to come to an altar. Jesus! Wherever you are, you're calling on that name because you know that there is power. And he's not limited to this building. And you know what? I just believe that God allows us to get to those places sometimes. Because sometimes we, we box God's power into this building. I can't wait for the day when we have people get the Holy Ghost in the sanctuary, in the multi-purpose room, in the large fellowship hall, downstairs in the small fellowship hall, hey, even out there on the sidewalk. Just so that we can see that God is not limited. He took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Sister Mary Wilson, rise up and walk in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Rise up. Rise up. In the name of Jesus. What you face does not have you bound. You've got freedom in Jesus. You have freedom in Jesus. You've got hope in Jesus. You've got strength in Jesus. You aren't bound. There is liberty in Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ. What if I stumble? Don't worry about it. Just hold on to his hand. Just hold on to Jesus' hand. Hold on to him. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. God's favor is on you. God's favor is on you. You're not here by accident. You're not here by mistake. You're not here by coincidence. The power of God is on you. Rise up and walk. When you leave out of this place, when you leave out, when you go home, wherever you go, you say, I'm walking in the Lord. I'm not staying here. I'm not staying in this place bound. I'm walking in Jesus Christ. Immediately his feet, his ankle bones received strength. And he leaping, leaping, stood up and walked. Leaping, stood up, 
and walked. I kind of wonder what that looked like for a man that had never walked. <laughs> I kind of wonder what that looked like for a man that had never walked. <laughs> You say, well, what if I stagger? What if I don't have my footing? What if I don't walk like everybody else? I don't think he was worried about that. He was just looking and saying, hey, I'm standing. I've never been able to do this before. I may not walk like you. I may not run like you. I may not shout. I may not dance. But I am standing. And walked. But he didn't go and run home. Oh, he didn't run home. You see, he only got to the gate. He only got to the gate. They only brought him to the gate. He could only get to the gate. They could only carry him so far. You need the body of Christ to get you to the gate. You need the body of Christ to get you to the gate. But let me tell you, when you get to the gate, there's a miracle at the gate. There's a miracle waiting for you. But that miracle isn't for you just to take home and go hide it. Don't just hide it and say, look, look what I've got. Let me go and preserve this. Let me go and cover these legs and protect these legs. Let me get all my padding on so nothing happens to them. No. He entered with them into the temple, into that place of prayer that he could never get into. He got into that place of prayer. He got into that place of the presence. And when he went in there, uh, I can only imagine what that looked like. Uh, maybe people were coming in, maybe like what we do for a prayer meeting. You know, you got to dim all the lights. Make it a solemn assembly. Make it quiet. Set the mood. Don't make eye contact with anybody. Hey, I, go find my... You know, it gets me as prayer meetings. I'll tell you, it, big, it gets me every time. I, every, 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 every prayer meeting, just about, I'll say 90%. You go to prayer meetings, you find this. Somebody done cracked out the Bible. I'm sitting there reading. We're supposed to be praying. <laughs> Talk to them. I'm, I'm not talking about just reading the scripture, finding direction. They spent the whole time reading the Bible. And you could have done that at home. We came together to pray. <laughs> And he got into that place. And when he went in there, he didn't go into this quiet place like, ooh, I wonder what I'm supposed to do. What's the protocol? We got six feet social distance. Do I need to wear a mask? I got to, no, 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 no. He went in there walking and leaping and praising God. Hey, man, don't you know this is a prayer meeting? He said, don't you know I just got healed? I just got set free. I just got delivered. You don't understand. I was bound. I was stuck at the gate. Now I can enter in. Some of you need to walk in here leaping and praising God. Some of you, when you come into this building, you need to walk in leaping and praising God. Well, people are going to think that I'm crazy, I'm a lunatic, I'm this, that, and the other. Look, if you're coming into this church, half the people probably think that you're like that anyway. <laughs> they see the word apostolic and they know those are the ones that are going to turn the place upside down. Yeah. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Notice what he did not get. At least the Bible doesn't communicate. I didn't see anywhere where he got alms. I didn't see anywhere where he got his natural need met. Sometimes we get so caught up in focus, God, I need this, God, I need that. And I'm not saying that we don't need things, but we get so caught up in that that we miss the supernatural miracle and blessing that God desires to bestow upon us because I didn't get my need met. But you know what? I, I don't think he cared. You can keep the alms. I can go find me some all somewhere. I can get around and move. I'm not, I'm not dependent on somebody to carry me to this gate anymore. There are some that have been lame and immobile for a period of time. And you define how long long is. It's been, if it's been 10 minutes, 10 years, been 10 decades, whatever it is, you, you, you determine. 
Some of you have been lame, and you, you're, not, you're not where you believe. You know where God would have you to be. You're not at the place. As close as you're getting to God is the gate. And the closest thing that you're getting is just a few alms. You're getting just enough maybe to go scratch together some food and a couple of possessions, but you're nowhere near what you want and even what God desires for you. He's saying, I'm in this condition, and I've been in here for a long time. And this is as far as I can get. The Lord wants to set some people free. It's time for some people to rise up and walk. It's time for some people to rise up and walk. You say, well, I can't. I can't do, do you know where I've been? Do you know my past? Do you know what I've struggled with? Do you know what I've faced? I've been trying. I've been coming to this point for a long period of time, and I've never been able to get to the point. I tried to stand up, but I keep falling down. I've tried to take a step, but I keep losing my way. And you think that that's God that's beating on you. I'm telling you, that is not God beating on you. You've got an adversary that wants you to believe that you can't get up and walk. You've got an adversary that wants you to, 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 to think and to walk with that mindset of, this is where I am and I'm always going to stay here. You say, if Jesus had been in my past, if Jesus had been in my home when I grew up, if there was a prayer life taking place there, if we had been going to church, if we had been fellowshipping with God, if we had, if these things were happening, I wouldn't be in this condition today. There's no guarantee of that. Because I know people that came into the building week after week, prayer meeting after prayer meeting, who've lost their way and fallen back from the Lord. So you can't tell me. That's no more than just an excuse. The devil would have you play a victim card. To say, I didn't grow up like so-and-so, and I didn't have what so-and-so had. So I'll never become. If Jesus can take five loaves and two fish and multiply them and feed 5,000 people, if he can go take a man that couldn't see and put some dirt and spit in his eyes and make him see, and we just take it all the way back, if the, if the King of kings, the Lord of lords, could speak this earth into existence, he could take this frail human being Raise them up to be a man or woman that's pleasing in his sight. Some of you only see yourself as that prodigal who left home. Down there with the swine, fed, feeding the swine. And the only thing that you can see is I'm only worthy. I'm not worthy to enter into, into the temple because I'm lame. I'm not worthy to enter into his presence. The best I have is just to feed some swan. Maybe eat what they have. And that prodigal, when he made up his mind to return home, he was coming back with a mindset that I just want to be a servant. I'm not going to come back and ask for the place that I left. I just want to be a servant. If I could just sit back off in the distance, off in the background, that's fine. Just, just let me sit off in the distance. That's not humility, that's pride. Come on. Come on. But the Lord does not call us to be in one state, and if we fall, to only assume to a lesser state because of what I have or have not done. I'll say this, I don't care how you get back to your father's house. I don't care if you make up your mind that I'm only going to get back and I'm, I, the only thing that I'm going to do is just clean the edge of the property. I don't care how you get back there, but get back there and let the Father do the rest. Get back to the Father's house. Get back to that place where he can cover you. Because even if you just get to the edge of that property line, he's going to come and get you and he's going to pull you in.
Well, Lord, I'm no more worthy. I'm not worthy to be a son. I'm not worthy to be what you called me to be. No, you're not worthy, but let me cover you. Let me cover your shame. Let me cover your sin and your guilt. And when I get done with you, when I get done with you, you're not going to see you. You're not going to see the past. You're not going to see that I was lame for 40 years. You're not going to see the failure. You're not going to see any of that. You're not going to look around and wonder, what are they going to think of me? You're not going to be consumed with, let me get my daily needs met. You won't be consumed with that. You'll be consumed with, look what the Lord has done. <laughs> look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. So therefore, I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him right now. Things haven't changed. I'm not who I want to be. I'm not who I think I should be, but I'm going to praise him. I'm going to rise up. I'm going to rise up. I'm not staying down in this place. I'm not staying in this place of death. I'm not staying in this place of loneliness. I'm sitting here at a beautiful gate, but this beautiful gate is not going to be my destination. I'm not staying here, but I'm moving on. I've got places to go in God. I've got things to see in God. I've got things to do in God. I've got a part to play. Some of you know, uh, you can look at your life right now and you see that there, there, that there are things that are going on, things that aren't in place. You've been battling with things for years. You've been struggling with things. Some of you are battling doubt, doubt in God. I don't care if you're sitting on, sitting on these seats and, and you condemn yourself. I, I'm having a hard time believing God. That, that happens sometimes. But can I tell you that your faith in God can be restored? You say, God, I hear your word. I want to believe it. I want to believe your word for me. Some of you are beating yourself up on where you are and where you are not in God. And that's for, I don't care if you're a first-time guest or if you've been here since creation. Some of you are depressed. Some of you are weighted down. Some of you are battling loneliness. Some of you, your heart has been broken. You've been abused, not just physically, but emotionally, and you're carrying that thing around, dragging it around and saying that this is my lot in life and this is, this is who I am. And everybody that I come into contact with, they're just going to abuse me. And I've got no defense against that. That is not the will of God, and that is not the mind of God. And that is not your place in God's kingdom. He called us to, to, he called us to tread upon on scorpions. He called us to walk victoriously. He called us to be conquerors and more than conquerors. He called us to be overcomers. He called us to be able to see. Some of you... You're blinded. You're so blinded you can't see past your situation. You can't see past your own thoughts of deception. And I'm not saying all that to condemn anybody. We're just calling it out for what it is. Because here in this moment today, you can walk out free. You can walk out delivered. You can walk out whole. And I'll tell you what, so many times uh, in, 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 in gatherings when, when, when God is working, that, that, that thought, it's like it sweeps through the building. But what if it doesn't happen for me? Come on, say that again. 
And you just begin to think outside, when, when I walk out, when I go home, what if this happens and that happens? And what if I don't respond correctly? Then that must mean that it did not happen. I said, rise up and walk. The Bible says, a just man falls seven times. Seven times. Now, I'm not giving you a license to go out here and sin and do whatever you want to do. That's not giving a license. It says, a just man. That means that I stumbled, I, I, I fell down. That means that this flesh, this, this, this dirt that we all beautified up and got looking nice and dragged in here to church, dirt. This dirt messed up. But I'm righteous in him. I'm just because he can cover me and cleanse me and pick me up. So stop trying to think ahead and chart the course and plan it out. Well, I see an obstacle in my way, and what if I don't navigate it just right? Look, call on Jesus. Call on Jesus. Yeah, but I've been trying. I'll tell you this. You know, you know how we treat God sometimes? They got it now, and I was wondering if they would take it off the shelves. I've seen some of them during COVID season and in the holidays. They pull out those little toys. They say, try me, singing and dancing, snowmen and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, do, do y'all go and disinfect that stuff at the end of the day? Because everybody touched them all. I used to be the one that walked through and just pressed all the buttons. Not now. <laughs> no. Girls, back up six feet. Don't touch the snowmen. Right. And sometimes we come into church like that. Walk by, let me see. Uh, that one sounds okay. Lord, uh, do I need to do all that? Uh, I don't know. Let me just, uh, that's okay. Some of us need to get out of that try me mentality. Bible says buy the truth and sell it not. Don't go walking through Sam's Club looking for your sample. Just go buy the product. Don't come to church just looking for a sample. I know the Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Invest yourself into what God has for you. And stop trying to figure out if I'm going to like this thing or not. I don't know if I'm going to like this deliverance or not. I don't know if I'm going to like this healing or not. I don't know if I'm going to like when these chains fall off or not. Do you want to be free or not? Do you want to walk with God or not? Well, let me just try it out and see how it handles. Let me just take it for a test drive. Do you have a return policy, God, if I don't like this road? 30-day, 90-day return policy. You know, when God saved us, God didn't attach a return policy to us that said, well, if they don't get it together in 90 days, I'm shipping them back into the world. So if God did that, knowing my frame, knowing my frailty, and knowing probably the day after I got saved, I was going to fall flat on my face. If he didn't ship me back to where I came from, I'm going to take what he has for me, whether I like it or not. Whether the vegetables are cooked the way that I want or not, I'm going to eat them. The Lord's got some deliverance for somebody here today. I say for somebody's here today. I'm talking to everybody in this building. I don't care if you're connected and watching on the TV, if you're watching on a device or whatever. And everybody out there in internet land. God has deliverance for somebody. Question is, will you rise up and walk? And don't worry about what it might look like if you go to stand up and you seem to wobble and teeter a little bit. He set me free. Jesus set me free. You know what? After that man was healed, they, all, all, all those around marveled and were astonished. 
And Peter said, well, why are y'all looking at us like we did something great? He told him, you know who did it? You ready? Here goes that boldness. The one that you crucified him. Jesus did this. The one that you crucified has made this man, has, has healed this man, has, has set him free. So if you got to the gate this morning, can I tell you, Jesus is waiting for you at the gate. Jesus is waiting for you today at the gate. What are you going to do? Now, I, at, 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 at other times, when I know two other times when Jesus healed people and they got up and walked, he told them to get up and walk. In this case, Peter, he, he reached down and took the man by the hand and lifted him up. Helped him stand, I suppose. Maybe, I don't know. But it says immediately his ankle bones received strength. We're not going to come and jumpstart you or anything like that. But I, we're going to make this, this is for everybody. This is for everybody. This isn't just for the person that's, that's just been down and out and has not lived right and lived a life of sin. This is for everybody. Because at times we carry around baggage that God doesn't want us carrying around. That's why we pray a prayer, search me, O oh God, know my heart, try me. And when God brings things to the surface, he intends and wants to deal with those things, not cover it all back up and bury it. So whatever you're facing that's got you paralyzed, whatever you've gone through that's brought you to a point of being lame, today is the day of salvation. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. We sang about freedom this morning. We sang about what he did on the cross. And the greatest or one of the greater ways of manifesting that is what God would do inside of our hearts and spirits. I'm going to ask everybody to close your eyes, bow your head. Right where you are, that's going to be your altar. That's going to be where the Lord will meet you. And if you would, would you open up your heart and spirit to the Lord right now? Open up your spirit to God. Because the Lord, more than, more than what you would desire, the Lord wants to heal today. The Lord wants to deliver today. The Lord wants to set free today. The Lord wants to break some chains today. The Lord wants somebody to stand up in their spirit today, to rise up, and to walk with him. Enter into his presence, into a depth that, that, that you have not reached ever before, a place of fulfillment in Jesus Christ that you have not reached before. The Lord wants to bring you to a depth of knowledge and understanding, a strength that you have not had or at least known that you had before, where he would reveal his grace, his mercy, and power in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, just begin to open up your spirit. I would beg of you and ask, please, don't say, well, that's not me. I've got it all together. If that thought would come through your mind, I pray that you would dismiss and say, no, I don't have anything holding me bound. I'm good. I don't need anything. Lord, keep on passing by. I don't need you. I just need you to meet my natural need. Oh, if you would, don't just stop at a natural need. But the Lord desires to meet you, touch you in your spirit, to make you whole. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Now I'm going to ask this, all that have faith in Jesus Christ, all that have faith in Jesus Christ, 
and that believe that he's able to heal. Believe that he's able to restore. Believe that he's able to make new. Be believe that he's able to heal you of any and everything. He's able to touch you. Would you stand? All that believe. All that believe. If you believe that he can provide for you, would you stand? If you believe that he loves you, would you stand? If you believe that his peace can cover and keep you, why don't you stand? And why don't you raise your hands right where you are and receive from God what he would bestow upon you. Receive deliverance right now. Receive hope right now. Receive peace right now. For your shame, would you receive double? For your shame, would you receive double? For your chains, why don't you receive deliverance? Why don't you take whatever you got, whatever you carry, whatever's weighted you down, and say, Lord, I release to you. Lord, I give you the failure. God, I give you the past. Lord, I've been bound. I've been bound. I've been tormented by the past. Lord, I have not been able to move forward. I have not been able to walk forward. At best, Lord, I've been able just to get to the gate. I've been able just to get to the gate, but God, I've never truly entered into your presence. I haven't entered into the place of being made whole, of being healed. Because every time I've left this gate, I've gone back to where I've always been. I've only come up to this place. But I desire to be set free today. I desire to be whole today. I desire to rise up and walk today. I'm not going back the way that I came in. I'm not going back. I'm not leaving out the way that I came in. I'm going to leave out home. I'm going to leave out leaping. I'm going to leave out rejoicing. I'm going to leave out praising God.
not just doing it for myself. I've got family that's looking to me. I've got family that's counting on me. I've got loved ones counting on me. You see, you've got to be able to rise up and walk. You've got to run your leg in a marathon. Because somebody might be counting on you to pass that the baton. Somebody might be counting on you to reach your leg in the race. You've got to determine. I'm not saying where I am. I'm not giving up. Jesus name before I encourage you don't leave here without doing that be baptized in Jesus be baptized in him washing away all your sins washing away all the past and detaching the past removing the past killing the past burying the past forever so that you can 
Arise in Jesus. Arise in new life, new birth in him. So we, we've got water downstairs. You can be baptized in Jesus' name, washing away all your sins. So if, if you desire to be baptized, see one of the, the one of the hostesses or ushers can, can lead you. See one of the ministers. But then we've got plenty of ministers that can baptize you. But I encourage you. I encourage you to do that. Amen. One more time, would you lift your hands up to the Lord and we can, can, can we thank him for his goodness, thank him for his greatness, for his power, for all that he's done. We bless your name, Lord. You are holy. You are righteous. You are just. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. here. Don't leave this here, not because it's my words, because it's God's word for you. Don't leave this here walking, walking the Lord. Hallelujah. One more time, one more time. Would you just lift your hands to the Lord? One more time. Allow the Lord to seal this in Allow the Lord to seal this. Allow the, allow the Lord to seal this word in you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm making my mind up. I might have come in just wanting to sit on the fringes, but I'm making my mind up. I'm going to be a son. I'm going to take my place in the Lord. I'm going to be all that he called me to be. I don't care what's happened before. Right now, I'm making my mind up. Right now, I'm determined.
you go to the doctor and they do an inspection internal, an x-ray or an MRI, and they, they come and say, hey, what you had working in there, it's not there. Things have changed. Or for you, the same can happen when a situation arises and you respond differently. You act differently. It's almost like an x-ray machine, and it begins to show a new nature, a new character, a new being. And you say, I didn't know that was in there. That's because of, that's God working in there. And you didn't know it. But the adversity sometimes brings out the best. The adversity brings out Jesus and allows him to be met. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we thank the Lord one more time? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for bringing me to this point. Thank you, Lord, that I got to the gate. Thank you, Lord, that I didn't have to stop at the gate, but I could enter in. I could enter in into fullness of joy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. reminder we are going to be dismissing by rows so the ushers will come and guide you please don't stay crowded in these in, in the stairwells don't 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 stay crowded down by the front uh, doors but once you move off to the side feel free to fellowship and do what you need to do amen god bless you look, for, look forward to seeing you tonight amen ushers Pass me by and it circled back around. If you are our first guest, we are glad to have you as a part of this service. Whether you're in here or if you're in one of our old programs, we're glad to have you a part. Please, we, we do have a gift for you. If you're in here, if you're in one of the overflow rooms, you can come see one of our ushers or greeters. They'll bring you up. We have a gift over here to my right. And we'd like to present to you. Amen. God bless you.